few technical issues. I'm a little bit later than I was supposed to be. I mean, really, I should have said 6.30 instead of 6, but uh, here we are. We're downtown, finally. Uh, it's crazy downtown. Um, and uh, what's going on? Some people say, what up? Right there behind me. So, uh, <clears throat> here's a little bit messy. I took my, uh, my bike downtown and um, parked over back there in front of Ray-Ban. Uh, in front of the mall, so hopefully there's no issues. Uh, I already saw some people that I was a little bit sus suspect, but that's life, right? Um, it would make sense <laughs> for me to not use my bike, I and mean, then it would just be a waste of, uh, of money to purchase it, so I just gotta get used to parking in places. Um, so any anyhow, uh, you know what, uh, it takes a while for people to pop in on chat. I think, I don't know if there's pre-roll ads or what, but uh, I just got a buzz. So I guess that means that we're live now. Uh, or that we'll soon be live. So um, I'm sure I'm gonna have to say this again, but uh, <clears throat> as per the description, um, I've got uh, a bunch of uh, socks to donate. Um, and uh, they're in my bag right now. I should probably get them ready. Uh, so anyhow, hello Alamo Sunday, what's going on? Uh, let me go see uh, if I can find any. Oh, actually here's something that's kind of interesting. So you know those um, those uh, cars that rent, not cars, sorry, those, uh, those uh, electric scooters you could rent? Um, that van is still going around and collecting all the ones that need charging. So as it drives past, um, the, the lights will start blinking like in an SOS pattern and uh, it'll start making a little chittering. Alright, uh, the, the homeless man just hit that dog right there behind me. Um, so yeah, anyhow. Uh, we are downtown and uh, let's go on our way. <laughs> Hello everyone, I think I think you're basically everyone. Um, let me flip on ahead. Uh, hold on. Okay, that was the one. Yeah, so that that homeless man with the dog just, just beat its dog right behind me as I was talking. Anyhow. Man. Thank you for hosting me. I'm glad to, to see that my uh, notifications are working again this time. It's Lee. Oh, okay. Where do we go? Uh, so let me show you guys. Uh, it's uh, it's pretty crowded over here. Oh, I thought I switched it around. Um, so this is uh, downtown San Francisco, uh, and. Yeah, it it was difficult getting here. Oh look, the cops are over here. I, don't, I wonder what's going on. I heard some chanting up over that way. I don't know if something's gonna happen. Um, but uh, yeah, downtown San Francisco, it was really crazy getting over here. Um, there was cars going in and out of the bike lane. Uh, somebody making an illegal turn. Um, nearly, uh, I nearly T-boned them. Uh, what's going on? <laughs> what's up? Okay, um, so I'm gonna go ahead and get the socks out. Hey, Lee, let's roll. <laughs> I'm gonna get the socks out and start heading right, a right away. Uh, Cat Juarez, what's going on? Um, so they're inside my bag. Uh, obviously, I intended to start at six, so I'm not exactly, I wasn't exactly prepared. Um, let me go ahead and take these socks out. They're inside this bag here. And, uh, yeah, if I see, if you guys see anybody who you think should get the shirt, you let me know. NJ is also watching with me. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and I got... Big old wad of socks. I'll just keep dipping in my backpack, I guess, for now. 
until I find a good place to sit down. Uh, let me... <laughs> We're making some beef stew and thinking about you. Oh man, I had never made a beef stew video. I'm contemplating going back on YouTube a little bit, but it's so crazy over there. Sorry, I only have one hand. I gotta use my teeth. Um, Alright, boom. So we got nine people viewing now. Alright, according to my stats. Well, actually, ten if you count NJ as well. Um, Lee, have you bought a turkey? So, uh, I don't have a huge family. I'm just gonna buy a chicken. And uh, you know I prefer chickens anyhow. Um, but yeah, the little one's a little too little. You know, she's only like five months old. I think she's too little for a, a big Thanksgiving uh, dinner with the rest of the family. So we're gonna do our own little one. And uh, I'm gonna uh, make all the stuff. Uh, so I'll probably have like a uh, garlic and herb chicken I'll uh, roast. All right, so uh, uh, hold on. It's neat. You guys need some socks? Socks? Hey, your eye patch is gone. Yeah, I gotta keep it close. Oh, okay. You're not wearing the last pair I gave you. No. <laughs> Why not? We're <laughs> too old. I gave it to you like less than a month ago. What's that? Oh, okay, no problem. You want you want you want socks? Yeah. Here you go. so bad. Thank you. No problem. Oh, can you drop something here? Oh, that's your knife. There you go. What I drop? Uh, your knife. Oh, there you go. Thank you. All right. Hopefully that doesn't become a murder weapon in the future. It's got my fingerprints on it. Oh no, the poor connection. All right, let me see. You want socks? Socks? <laughs> you don't want them? That's okay. I can give them. Okay. Oh no, sorry. Um, so, oh. Man, it is crowded. You know what I'm gonna do? Because uh, those socks, oh, those socks go pretty quick. Um, I think I'm gonna, gonna sit down here. Well, not sit down. I'm gonna uh, set up here. And um, oh man, it's got poor connection. I think it's just because it's too crowded downtown. Um, but I've been trying to do my best to make sure that uh, I haven't been over the uh, allotment. So I'm just gonna set up on a tripod and get all the socks. I'm wearing cargo pants. Get them all set up so uh, I can give them out without having to work. And you know, actually, I'm a bit paranoid about my bike. Uh, so I'm probably gonna be going and uh, walking around where my bike is parked just to make sure there's no ne'er-do-wells looking at my bike. Or jacking it. Because um, someone was scoping it out as soon as I left it. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay. But yeah, what are you guys' plans for, for uh, Thanksgiving? I think I'm going to make um, muscle sprouts and all that. Uh, I may even make my own uh, pumpkin pie from scratch. Uh, of course, gotta get the candied yams. Um, and uh, who knows? Oh, you wouldn't have think they'd want a huge bike. Well, those components are still worth something. Uh, the wheels, I mean, it's basically only the frame that's huge. Uh, but yeah, they could still sell it. There's still people selling used double uh, XL bikes. Um, so. um, and 
uh, what else? I'm a bit distracted. But oh yeah, I'm gonna make scalloped potatoes. So that was nothing. Somebody's uh, somebody just had a, a bag of booze that broke and and uh, broke open. So. Try to keep it mostly on my left hand side. Ah, better. We'll be doing the turkey, okay? Shelly will be here. Oh, okay. And uh, Abuelita will be there too, right? Remember the guy with the saw? Oh, of course. He cut right through the wheel. Uh, that sucks for that guy. For the guy who owns the bike. Or girl, I guess. Um, yeah. She will. <laughs> So anyhow, like I said before, if you guys see somebody who you think should get a shirt, let me know. I'm carrying one of every size. Uh, likewise, if you guys are downtown and want a shirt, just come by and I'll give one to you. Uh, and that's open to anybody. Anybody comes over, ask for a shirt, I will give them one. I think now until, let's say until the New Year's. Anybody wants a Lee's Channel shirt? somewhere somewhere between small and an extra large come over and see me during a stream and I'll give one to you but only one per stream so whoever's first gets it provided I haven't already given the, the size you want out uh, so now I'm walking around like a crazy guy <laughs> I feel like um, oh here's a bunch of cops just chilling uh, I, I feel like um, like I'm a jockey. So let's go. Over. So um, I'll I'll show you guys my bike. By the way, uh, since I wasn't able to do it last time because it was all because uh, I was riding it and it was mounted on. Um, and uh, yeah, live performer over here. I actually had bought a, a new um, a new bike seat. So you can see the new bike seat that I, I'm riding for my first time. I haven't tried the one that was donated to me, but oh boy. I still haven't recovered from the last time I rode my bike. Fortunately, it's just uh, purely transport this time. What's a jockey? Somebody who rides a horse? Let me, let me just show you. I got it, like, it's ballooned on either side. Uh, a jockey is, is the person on the horse during a horse race. Uh, so yeah, let me show you that bike. So that's the thing I was riding on. Um, the Canyon Endurace CFSL. Yep, and that's this is the new seat that I'm riding on. Whoops. Much more comfortable than the last one I was on because the last one had uh, plastic underneath and, uh, you know, hard, hard, hard foam on top. And uh, boy, that was an assault. This, because it's leather, um, it flexes. And look, there's no way it could contact this part here in between, which is, uh, you know, the part that's most important. Um, yeah. 
So, anyhow. Red Dead Redemption. I, don't, I haven't played the new Red Dead Redemption, if that's what, <laughs> if that's what you're referencing. Um, hold on, there was somebody probably walked across the street, I guess. So anyhow, uh, I'm going to be walking around this area and make sure uh, nobody messes with it. There's a notification of public hearing. Ba, 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 ba. Ah, nothing interesting. So, uh, let me go down off the beaten path. Last few times I've gone this way, the signals dropped out, um, but I'm going down to, uh, to Mission. Uh, it's a little bit sketchier down there, but I might see more people who actually need uh, socks and shirt and all that. I don't know. You know, I'm gonna. Th I think. Uh, how's Carlos been? Um, well, you know, uh, uh, he's been working a lot. Uh, I don't. He hasn't really been talking to me. Uh, I've been calling him, but he hasn't really been uh, answering. So he's doing his own thing. Um, but as far as I know, he's working. He saved up a little bit. Uh, he's uh, kind of disheartened that it's taking so long to save up money. Uh, and uh, I guess uh, last I heard about his emotional state, he was a bit depressed uh, around the holidays. Like he normally gets excited, but this year he got depressed. So. Yeah. I don't know. I wanted to go on a on a on an epic bike ride with him, but uh, I can't really do that if I can't really maintain contact. So, but I mean, I guess it's all for the best because still need to recover my loins. After my last stream where I was on my bike, I watched a thing. By the way, there's no way I'm doing another stream at uh, around this time without. Uh, having some li uh, lights because uh, it was too blurry and streaky so I apologize for the lousy stream last time uh, you need some socks okay hold on here you go buddy there Uh, holiday, the holidays can be depressing. Yeah, you know what I mean? Uh, I would, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's not really predictable whether or not you're going to be depressed around the holidays or not. I mean, um, I was depressed around my birthday. Um, you know, I guess because I was thinking about my mom whose birthday is right around my birthday. But uh, my mom actually died December 4th. I'm not feeling depressed at all right now. I don't think I will be. Uh, I've been feeling very excited about the holidays, you know? Just the uh, the Christmas, uh, the, the crispness of the air. Um, I don't know, I just feel a charge. You know, I just feel it coming. And uh, it's exciting. But you know, when you get older, I mean, the holidays are, in, well, they're, they're, they're about the little ones, you know? It's a transition, but I've, uh, it's been a long time, but I've been more excited about giving gifts than getting gifts. If I got nothing for Christmas, I'd still be happy as long as I was able to give gifts that people really enjoy. So. But uh, yeah, this year, hopefully the little one's not watching, but I, there's a few good things to get. So we, we actually, um, we found a, a scooter, uh, a like an Elsa scooter um, that somebody was throwing away, and um, you know my my eldest daughter, who's uh, who's four years old, was riding around in that thing. And at first she was really scared, but she got really good. Unfortunately, she left it out of our, our parking garage, and it got ran over. So, Tony Shiano, thank you for the bits. 
A welcome to the stream also, Tony. Um, so that thing got ran over, so I'll get her a proper scooter. A Razor scooter, I think. And I was also thinking about getting her roller skates. But I think maybe I'll save that for another time. Um, the little one being five months old, she doesn't really need anything, nor will she remember it. Uh, but, yeah. I was thinking about other stuff. She wants other little doodads, which I will also get. But, uh, yeah. I always outdo myself, but this time I, I literally can't because the savings are depleted. So it's only going to be a few key items. So uh, anyhow, what's up with you guys? Have you guys set up the trees already? Uh, put up your lights? Waiting until after Thanksgiving? Now, I haven't seen anybody, by the way, um, to give socks to. I know uh, some of you guys might be dropping out. that uh i heard that um that awful wailing and i thought it was a bad street performer what's going on raven's heart 19. nj 89 er uh hello brother letting that stew simmer what'd you put inside your beef stew nj 89 er i should i should at least put my uh little recipe up for you guys to do it but I was thinking I have so many ideas of stuff that I uh, want to do and then so little time to actually do it NG 89 er thanks thank you for the bits there he is on his own name yes <laughs> raising the view count to 11 uh, yeah that's cool you know what it's been a long time since I, I made beef stew I just feel like, uh, you know, taking care of two little ones, it's a 24-7, well, not seven, I get some respite on the weekends, but it's a 24-5 uh, job, you know? Uh, there really is no time off, so there's no time to do anything. And you know, I felt really bad um, with, uh, with Laura, the oldest one, and she sleeps next to me at night. Um, what the hell? But anyhow, Change, of course. Um, oh. Oh. Um, but he, he's, Somebody looks like he's selling some stolen paintbrushes. Uh, where is Carlos? I assume Carlos is at home. Um, okay, let's see. Sorry, I missed some of the stuff. Uh, I missed a lot of the comments. Uh, there he is on his own. Okay, I'm eating pizza. You are not. You are just. I ate deep dish pizza last night, so I'm good. Uh, beef, carrots, potato, celery, beef stock, seasoned flour. I'm still waiting on your recipe. Um... Uh, I don't use uh, beef stock. Yeah, I don't. I don't use beef stock, but it, it's uh, it's a bit different. 
Uh, and I don't use flour either. Um, so, uh, Carlos, um, I haven't really been talking to him as much as usual. Lee, what's better, pecan pie or pumpkin pie? Pumpkin pie. Yeah, without a doubt, pumpkin pie. Um, I'll be a shitty Atlanta pizza. Well, I've never been to it. I've, I've never had pizza outside of California, so. I've had New York style pizza, Chicago style pizza. Uh, of course, Italian style pizza. But uh, never outside, so who knows? Uh, a la mode. Yeah, that's good every once in a while, but uh, I just like having uh, pumpkin pie. Not any kind of frosting or any kind of topping with a nice uh, glass of milk. Which is hard because I'm lactose intolerant, so it's a nice glass of lactose-free milk. Um, and actually, you know, uh, I've gotten pretty into making pumpkin pies and uh, tried to follow some old, old recipes. So the, the modern pumpkin pies aren't made like they used to be. Um, the old pumpkin pies were made in a time when uh, the spices were very expensive and it was sort of a luxury food. And so, Jesus Christ. Look at this. What the hell is going on here? Let me switch to the wide angle. If only somebody else honked, maybe this would all move. Oh, I guess this is a major problem here. Uh, and so, we have the train here. Oh. You don't want to get in a collision with one of these guys. They will F whatever you're riding up. Because they're just a giant hunk of solid steel. Um, I, I was in one along with Carlos when it crashed into a bus. Uh, very much well actually not even the new buses the old buses and the entire thing split in half wow everybody joins the fray and adds their own horn um well anyhow as it's morphed into a colliery dis culinary discussion channel. I think you launched it off. Norgy Pap. Norgy Pap. Always call you Norgy. Uh, you know what? I keep walking back and forth. I, I'm just gonna forget about the bike for now and just uh, he died. All he left. What's going on, buddy? How you been? So good. How are you? You know, Papa was a Rolling Stone. Sure. Wherever he laid his hat was when he died. What happened? No, all he left is. Was... How are you doing this afternoon? Hungry. Yeah, I used to be homeless too. Really? Yeah. How long? Uh, well, you know, when I was 18, I was dropped off outside a homeless shelter. Oh uh, shit, that's wrong. It was over at uh, the Larkin Street Youth Shelter. You know that place? Oh yeah, yeah, for youngsters. Uh, yeah. So I was uh, basically from there. I was in a. I was there for like four months and then like a year and a half in another program. So that was basically it. I never spent years out on the street. But uh, Me, Samaritan House. What's that? Samaritan House. Samaritan House. Are you staying out there right now? Oh, you used to. Only 90 days. Oh, okay. I've been on the street for 30 years. 30 years? How old are you? What's that? 42. 42? Since you were 12? Since you were 12? Yeah. Here in San Francisco? Well, what about like Diamond? You know, there's uh, I went to San Bruno. San Bruno? Okay. We hope. Yeah, sure. You went in children's shelter? I mean, I, I grew up in children's shelters, but I don't consider that homeless. Me did. I did because... She went to jail. My mother went to jail. Oh, I got you. Yeah. Yeah. Have you yeah. go in any group homes? Yeah. I, I, I have. For three years. If you want to 
want to include group homes. I've been homeless since 13. Morning, morning for Joey. Do you understand me? Yeah. Group home man. Uh, yeah, group home. I mean, a few corrupt spots. When did you get out of the group home? When they dropped me off outside of the, uh, the homeless shelter. At 18. Yeah, at 18. Yeah. What did you do? You went to the shelter? Yeah, yeah, so, you know, my dad beat me. My mom's schizophrenic. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's not... So, right. well, so well, what about your dad? You never knew him, or...? I did, but you know what? He was an alcoholic. Oh, yeah. You know what happened, right? An alcoholic. He used to beat the shit out of us. Yeah. I mean, it's like... Sure. He would, he would hit me so hard, I'd fly out the fucking door. It's like a fucking night. It's like you'd rather not even know them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, every, every time he got drunk, every Saturday and Sunday, the room I fly off the fucking night. You gotta find a better one. You know, yeah. basically. You're not winning. I gotta own on. Yeah. I just wanna wash the car. I wash this truck. And, uh, and my kids. Yeah, yeah. Hey, uh, what size shirt are you? A, would you like a shirt like this? Yeah. No, I don't think you should. No, I'm not giving you my shirt, buddy. <laughs> no, I got one in my. I mean, I didn't say it was dirty. I just said. Yeah, I got you. I'm not gonna walk around shirtless. You already gave me the socks. Where's the socks at? You you tucked them away under your. Uh, I know. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> you were close to my bosom. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, let's see. This is. How large. much does that cost? How much do they cost? Uh, for like twenty bucks. Yeah. Oh, oh, I don't have twenty dollars. No, it's for free, buddy. It's for free. It's, I'm giving it to you. <laughs> Excuse me. No problem. There you go. Uh, don't don't yeah. sell it, buddy. That's for no, you. No. All right. That's my first thing. Yeah. No one's gonna see it because it's not. Okay. Thank there you, you go. Man. All right, no problem. What's your name? Next time I see you. Jose. Jose. Lopez. Jose Lopez. I'll keep an eye out for you. What's that? Oh, sorry, buddy. So, there we go. That's a former foster youth. Uh, somebody who used to be in foster care. Sorry about uh, him not being in frame, but he kind of, he came up to talk to me. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I may see him again. So he said he was homeless since 12, but he, ca he considers the group home and foster home system homeless. I mean, you know, you guys heard what I said. But if you're going to count that, then I've been homeless since 13. I mean, I'm not homeless now, of course. Under any definition. Good go with Lee. Well, thank you, Lee, that guy. I was worried about uh, when he was asking how much it's worth about him selling it. Uh... like what you were saying about people's childhoods. About people's childhoods? Um, yeah. So anyhow, I'm gonna keep, uh, oh, the beatings. Oh yeah. Well he, well I just asked him what about his dad and he brought up the beatings. Yeah, of course. I mean, he's, he's an alcoholic. You know, he had a, um, I'm not sure if you guys can see it, he had a, um, a, a 40 ouncer. Um, so, uh, I just hope, you know, he's kind of, he's, he's uh, pretty gone. Um, so hopefully he doesn't just open his jacket and drop everything out. He's tucking it away underneath his, uh, his wing. So, but, uh, yeah. 
yeah it's funny I never even <laughs> I never even talk about my my childhood really when I'm talking about being homeless Jose Lopez I'll try to remember that I'm very very poor when it comes to remembering people's names uh, so uh, again we go on our journey so what's crazy is uh, now we're here and uh, there's almost nobody decathlon Ooh, I think the decathlon makes their own sporting equipment I'll have to take a look over here later I didn't know we had one of those over here But yeah, you know, he was talking about uh, being like like hit so hard he flew from room to room. I mean, I didn't want to switch it over to myself while he's talking about that. But I remember my dad nearly knocking me out. Um, everyone's got their baggage. Yeah, of course. Are you talking to people out on the street? Did you notice he approached you with the words of the song "Papa Was a Rolling Stone"? I did because. Um, there, the, the reason why he was doing that is because somebody was playing out on the street. Papa was a Rolling Stone over on the corner. Um, so, let me uh, go over and walk on the other end of the street. The nice thing about being on Twitch versus YouTube is that if somebody sings a cover song or uh, even if somebody's playing some songs, Aris Gonzalez, hello! Even if somebody's um, playing copyrighted music, it's not like the whole stream is now ruined, uh, which was a problem I had to constantly be aware of. So you guys have been able to hear some of the ambient noise because I haven't had to uh, dump out the audio. So I'm going over on the other uh, side of the street as I walk uh, because it's, uh, hold on, oh it froze, alright, let me see this guy, you want some socks buddy, socks, brand new, there you go, was that, yeah for free, for you, thank you, Wow, that guy over there. Uh, I went over to give him those. I didn't realize until actually I was already talking to him about giving him some songs. He was he was pissing on that trash can back there. He was unzipped and out and pissing all over that trash can. So if I would have seen that before I approached him out giving him the socks, maybe that would have been. Maybe I wouldn't have gave it to him at that point in time. Constantly changing. Wow, everyone is somebody else playing live music here. But San Francisco changes so much. Oh yeah, they're playing over on the corner over there. Okay, let me go back to where I was going before. That's a pretty nice 
nice bike. Pretty sure that wasn't purchased. If he if he wasn't sitting on some stolen property and next to some stolen property, I would have given him some socks, but I'm not gonna be giving stuff to, to thieves. I mean, he was sitting on, on top of a luggage bag, right? So what are the chances he's got a nice mountain bike and he's got a giant, giant luggage, rolling luggage. People get their luggage stolen all the time. You will see um, the homeless selling luggage all the time. Just uh, not only the, the, the actual like rolling luggage containers, but the contents of that luggage. You'll see homeless people selling children's clothes and uh, DVDs and personal hygiene products and all kinds of stuff that people take when they're traveling. Irons and, you know, curling irons and all that kind of stuff. Um, so anyhow. I'm just, I'm gonna go through my usual route where I know the signal is relatively strong. Um, the worst thing is when I is when I keep talking and uh, I think I'm telling you guys something or something crazy happens and then you guys don't see it because the signal drops out. So let's see. This guy up here may need something. Some socks? Socks? Yes, sir. Okay. Oh. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> Hope. Thank, you. Thank you so much, sir. Oh, no problem. How long have you been out on the streets? Um, I don't know. I think five months. Five months? Yeah. Where are you from? Sacramento. Sacramento? Oh, okay. I used to live in Sacramento. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. yeah. How come you came to San Francisco versus Sacramento? I don't know. It's just a trip. I, I, I just wanted to take a, you know, take a trip on my own. Sure. You, you tried using any of the resources here? No, not yet. Oh. You know where Glide Church is? No. Oh, it's over in the Tender... You know the Tenderloin District? Tenderloin. Oh, you district. don't know anything here, huh? No, I don't know nothing. I so, keep walking around. That's all. Where do you stay? Anywhere. Oh man, um, right now it's dangerous, but uh, there's a, over, um, but if, I wish I knew what the address was, um, over, um, over into the Tenderloin, which is a neighborhood, so you go down, you know where the mall is? No. Oh, really? You don't even know. All right, hold That's on. Right. Let me use my phone. I'll, I'll try to find out the, the address. Okay. I'll tell you the address, okay. and then um, hopefully you could go there. And they have, they have all kinds of. They give you free food, right. um, and they could give you. They could tell you what to do if you need a place to stay. Um, uh, and so, okay, it's. 330 Ellis Street. Ellis? Ellis. Ellis Street. Okay. Yeah, 330. So, so in the future, if you just go down this way and it's going to be towards the right. And just ask people where Glide Church is. A lot of people will know where it is. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no problem. Oh, sorry. I was not was not on the stream I know but I was just trying to help him out a little bit uh, and I will continue on my way is uh did the did, did the stream cut out when I was giving him uh, 
instruction? I don't think so, because there's 13 of you guys. Um, so, I'm going... Okay, Tony Shiano, thank you. Well, is that... Inside the little tumbler, is it a, is, it's a bean or a heart? Oh. <laughs> thank you, Tony, for the, for the bits. Um... I don't know, I'm, I'm looking around, I, I want it to be just non-stop action, but there's not a whole lot of people around me. Ah, uh, you see. I'm just trying to keep my head on a swivel, uh, so I can try to see where there are people to uh, give out the socks to. Um, but, uh, yeah, he sounded like he, like he was Indian or something. Um, but uh, in the end, he, he asked for money. So you know, you know what that means. Um, I'll keep it over in front of me for a while so you guys can see that there's really nothing going on for, for the time being. I, I like to go down this way because people usually sleep here. I know if I'm giving them something that they actually need it because... Uh, NJ 89 or thank you for cheering. Thank you for the 100 bits again. I, I, I wonder how many bits it would take to fill up that little tumbler. That little tumbler is greedy. I've seen somebody donate 20 bucks and it just put three little bits in there. You know, it's crazy. I saw somebody riding down the street in a black bike. I was like, oh, my bike. There is like nothing. There's nothing down here. I mean, that's why people sleep. You know, normally it's still a little bit further down. I'll go down that way and I'll head up on the other side of the street. That way I could see other people there. Oh, dang, Tony Shiano. <laughs> Thank you again. Happy Thanksgiving and holidays, oh, folks. Oh, you gave, you gave 200 at one? I mean, you gave two hundreds. That's what it says right here, or from what I see. But anyhow, thank you again. Hey, you guys, if you're gonna donate, there's a bunch of other things, like, I have that, um, what do you call it? Uh, the sound alert. You guys could fool around with that. I don't think that takes any uh, additional money. So it's still just a normal don donation along with uh, some crazy ass sounds. Um, that's a, that would always be something funny to uh, play around with if you're feeling the urge. Um, but yeah, there's, okay, around here, uh, Hold on. Over here at this statue, there's always, not always, because no one's there now. There's usually uh, people uh, chilling out here. Um, let's see if there is on the side that I'm not looking at. Hey, you want some socks? Okay. Oops. Here you go. No problem. So there you go. Like I said, there's... I guess I can say always. If, if, if no one was there, I wouldn't be able to say always, but... Uh, pretty reliable but yeah look this is just a big empty oops it switched back to me look nothing 
and uh, I'm trying to walk at a pretty good clip uh, to try to see if I could find anybody to give stuff out to. Stuff big socks, because that's all I have left to give out to. Hey, but by the way, like I said, if anybody, anybody watching this is uh, in the San Francisco, the San Francisco, if anyone that is in San Francisco, feel free to uh, stop on by and I will give you a shirt. Uh, anything from small to large, because that's what I have on. And give, not charge, give. Concerned about my bike though, because I've seen a few people, a few pretty haggard looking people with some pretty nice bikes. It doesn't look like there's anyone at all down here. You guys tell me, should I turn around or not? I'm gonna keep on, uh, I'm gonna keep on heading down until uh, one of you guys tells me otherwise. So I'm sorry if this is uh, resident sleeper content, but uh, that's how it goes sometimes. What's going on, buddy? Yeah, you want to be on the stream? You're doing a stream. I am. On Twitch or on what? On Twitch, yeah. Cool. What kind of stream are you? Oh, I so I. Do you mind if I have you on there? Sure, no problem. Okay. Uh, so, uh, I, I go around. Right now, I'm giving out socks to the homeless. Socks. That's awesome. Yeah. So I used to be homeless. Oh, interesting. And um, so I try to talk about their lives, but you know. It's hard to talk to them without having something to give out. So, That's true. giving out socks. Uh, somebody actually donated the socks to me, and now I'm donating That's to strange. the homeless. Yeah. And so, uh, how did you turn your life around? Uh, so, I mean, it's a long story. So, basically, the reason why I was homeless is because I was raised in the foster home system, mm -hmm. and after hitting 18, I was dropped off outside of a, a right. homeless shelter, the Larkin Street Youth Shelter. So you were from the Bay Area. Yeah. Where are you from, by the way? New York? Okay. Um, and uh, so anyhow, uh, I stayed there in the shelter. Once I got in, there's a waiting list to even get in. Right. So um, I, I was inside there, and then I went to another program through Catholic Charities um, called uh, uh, Guerrero House, because it was on Guerrero Street. And I was there for a year and a half, and then afterwards split a studio with my friend. And it's been a bit of struggle since, but I haven't gone back. So were you working uh, during that I was time? working in the, in the homeless shelter. I was actually, like, getting eaten alive by bed bugs. Yeah. Just, like, all over. Where, and I was working at, um, at uh, this place. It was a cafe inside of the um, California Academy of Sciences. Uh, so uh, they actually bought me a bug bivy you know, a net for me right. to sleep in because I was going to work just covered in bites. And, uh, you know, there was like parasitic worms inside the showers. It was no good. People were stealing from me as I was sleeping. There was no... Uh, that was like... Uh, 13 years ago? 13, okay. It's been a while. Yeah, it's been a while. It's been a while, but, you know, I have no... I mean, so, yeah, I, I have... But... The, that's why I'm able to go out and talk right. to people. I'm not actually living through it right now. Right. Yeah. You transitioned, and so you, you got a flat with your friend. Oh, yeah. And, and then, then he decided to go the back to the homeless shelter. Okay. So, uh, I mean, it's not, it doesn't just end there. Uh, but he, he decided to go back to the homeless shelter while he still could. Because right. it was up until 24. Um, and he's a bit older than me. And then, uh, what did I do? Uh... I, I was at City College um, while I was also trying to work as as much as I could. I ended up working like a, 
60 hours a week just to keep the place because now it's all to my own self. I couldn't afford it. Yeah. Um, and uh, I ended up not being able to stay there. Um, I talked to the people at City College. They hooked me up with uh, a place in a hotel, actually, because I'm a former foster youth. It's through a, a program called Guardian Scholars. I think I'm skipping around. There's also some other parts where... Oh, yeah, so I was talking to the people at Guardian Scholars. There was some sort of voucher program where you could get your own place and uh, they, they would help pay for it. But I was kind of bamboozled and I ended up going into essentially a group home uh, <laughs> over in South San Francisco, which is no good. And then I stayed with... Uh, I mean, it's a very complicated, long yeah, story. That's why I was trying to wrap up with the, the but, splitting the studio. But my sense is you had some opportunities for programs to put you slowly back in the workforce. Uh, and, uh, so get, the get programs... The the, they, they didn't put me in the in the workforce. Well, you you had to yeah. take the initiative, but there were some support programs that would let you maybe yeah, well, I mean, stay it's not, or, or sort of get, get out of your right? Yeah, there was a there's a homeless shelter, um, and you know things were a bit better for me for having a job. It was still not the best. City College was free in San Francisco. It wasn't at the right? time. Uh, but, however, because I was a former foster youth, I was able to to get something called the Board of Governors fee waiver. And uh, so it was free for me, but it wasn't. I still had to pay for for all the other things. Just tuition was covered. So, so thirteen yeah. years ago, there was, there was less spending on various programs as opposed to the cities taking off a lot of taxes. And so, sure. Uh, and There's less giant business. There wasn't any Twitter or anything right. else like that here. Which brings so. pros and cons. To the city. Sure. But uh, no, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, like after you've been homeless. The, that kind of is always looming, you know. So I mean, it's not, it's not a risk for me now. Uh, you know, I'm married and stuff, so I'm, I'm I'm doing okay now. But up until that point, it was a constant threat, and it always I was always like on the razor's edge of slipping back into being homeless. Yeah. So I definitely, for folks that don't have a lot of sort of social support nets, where where they do family, oh, yeah. friends. Yeah, but uh, no amount of, of debt is going to make you shoot up. That's true. You know, or smoke crack or do meth, you know, which is the primary problems here. So you're very pragmatic about that. Would you say your sort of thesis is people need to take their lives in their own hands? And... No, I, my thing is... Um, Everyone focuses on the homelessness and um, the drug usage and uh, kind of patching over those, but those are symptoms of deeper problems. So like, okay, for example, I, can't, I grew up in the foster care system. Did you know that 50% of those in the foster care system will be homeless? It's a large number. 50%. That's a coin flip. That's, and there's like, so that's like a, a, a quarter million kids every year. That's a lot of people getting dumped out on the street. Half of those will have post-traumatic stress disorder. I have post-traumatic stress disorder, you know? Um, I mean, that and uh, obviously there's a drug problem, but those are interrelated. I'm the only person that I know who went through the, 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 the shelter system, the group home system, that didn't succumb to addiction. You know, I made a conscious effort not Why to do drugs. If you're exposed to it, everybody around you is... Because I didn't want to do anything that would affect my intelligence. I, like, I, I viewed that as, like, one of my key strengths. Right. So I explicitly avoided it and just stayed clean. So it sounds like even as a teen and a kid, you had a lot of practice and self introspection to predict that this would cause you to go down that path. Yeah. I mean, fortunately, like I said... Everybody, everybody. So. Do, do you know the foster programs in other states or other countries have that sort of level of uh, reductivism or dropout rates? I suppose. Into um, so use? that that is not that fifty percent. I think that's I think that's nationwide. Um, it may just be California, but I think it's nationwide. But I have we, to look at that. How do we compare to other countries? Well, there's some countries where you got nothing, you know, but so you'd have to com compare it to 
other first world countries. Uh, I think over in Germany, if there's a problem, um, they'll actually send somebody into the house. Instead of taking the kid out, they'll send somebody in there. Um, so I don't know. I'm not really familiar with all of that. Um, they've made some changes that don't seem to be for the best, you know, because when I was inside the system, the, the shelter was basically my home base. And from the children's shelter, I'd go out to like a group home. I'd leave the group home, go back to the shelter back and forth. They've been shutting down those shelters. So now you basically get 5150. You basically go into the basement of a hospital for less than 24 hours and then thrown back out into another place. So you really have no home as you're going from place to place. Those group homes are not ideal either. Right. I mean, I've been slammed through walls and stabbed with tacks. You know, those places, I've been in places where there's no food for like a month, you know. So th those are not uh, the best places in the world. Uh, the shelter is really was really my respite from those places. You know, I would... I would um, and you were in a shelter until 18, right? Uh, so, at 17, well, there's all kinds of stuff. I mean, I'm trying to make a document. Okay, go ahead. Sure. Sorry, you guys, if it's been boring. Because <laughs> I've been talking to you for a, for a while here. They've just been silent. Uh, but, uh, so, when... So when I was inside the, 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 the group home, foster home system, um, they, uh, they didn't like... Oh, you're locking on the phone. Yes. Okay. They, they didn't like that... Uh, I was trying to get the CHESPI, the California High School Proficiency Exam. Really? Yeah. But that, that makes no sense. They should encourage you to do that. They... Uh, I think they, they get funding by me going to high school. So I was trying to take the, the chess at 16. Earlier? Yeah. And I was in a foster home at the time. Um, and uh, my, my social worker told me if, if I pass, he's taken me out of the foster home. Yeah. And of course I passed. So I got taken out of the, the foster home. Let me see if I can get both of us in. So they're, they're incentivized uh, to keep you in the system in a certain way. Yeah, so uh, they took me out of there and then they moved me into uh, uh, a place here called Marianne Carpenter, so this transitional housing. Um, so I had my own little room and I got a little bit of money for food and I basically took care of myself. That's the place that I got kicked out of when I was 18. They just threw me out. So uh, it wasn't a foster home or a group home. Um, over there, I, w I was eager to go into... Um, uh, I was eager to go to City College, you know, I wanted to take college courses. I already have a, basically a high school diploma. They wouldn't let me go there. They actually said, because my credits are so low, because I've been done with high school, that I'm going to have to go into, uh, into a special high school to get my credits back up. And so they forced me to go into there and prevented me from going to City College. They said I could only go to City College if I'm going to get my GED. The GED is the minimal requirement to pass high school. It's below a, uh, a high school diploma and below the chest, which is right. proficiency. So, uh, GED is an exam. Yeah, it's an, it's, the GED and the, and the chest are both uh, exams. The chest is showing that you have proficiency. It's, you get a diploma at the end, allegedly. I never got mine. But it is a high school diploma, essentially. But you can take it earlier. So it was, it was designed for, for actors, child actors, so they wouldn't have to go to school, basically, uh, while, they're, while they're acting. So, uh, and the GED is that you meet the minimum requirements to get a diploma. So it's kind of looked down at a little bit. So, uh, yeah, they... It's interesting that you sort of incentivize not to go and see education after all. Yeah. So this was 13, 14 years ago. Technology. <laughs> there's, there's no technology at the time. No smartphones. Yeah, let's let's say 2004. Yeah, uh, but yeah, there's. 
I didn't even have a computer. No, my reset. Yeah, but you know, like. It, so yeah, it, it, there, was, there was nothing that, that, that helped me. I just felt hindered. I, I asked to go to my, uh, to, you know, because when you're in the system, there, there are court cases when they go and they go all this stuff. I asked my social worker, I begged and pleaded with him every time. And he's legally obligated to bring me there. I never got to go to my any single one of my court cases. Uh, I remember the guy's name right now. The guy's name is Richard Egan. That was my social worker. He kind of asked me over. He's a director or policy maker now. He's probably retired. Um, what you, the reason I was asking that question is I do feel now access to the majority online learning etc. that that'd be available for you. I would want to go to classes if I had if I had the opportunity. Definitely would want to go and sit down and go to classes. But City College uh, being available to all residents is probably the big plus, right? But. Like I said, at that point in time, the only computer that I had regular access to was inside the staff's room. It was the staff's computer. It wouldn't let you go. Right? No. No, if they told me that I cannot go to City College except explicitly to take my CD, they wouldn't allow that. You know? And they would be upset that I wasn't working and I was going to City College. You know? So, I'd, ha I'd have to work my way around them. I, I really think that it's a funding issue. By, the, by how adamant they were that I go to uh, high school and how they ultimately kicked me out because I wasn't going to high school. So, yeah. Because you're in past three. Yeah, I was done. I was done. They were sending me to a continuation high school. It was crap. It was super crap. I mean, I, I noticed, um, you know, that back then, like those online, like IQ tests and all that was popular. I noticed questions from those online um, um, like uh, IQ tests on the, the, the uh, blackboard yeah. inside the, the math class. The math class was taught by the gym teacher who was still wearing his Adidas track shirt. Okay. You know? What's your Lee channel? Okay, so it's a uh, boom right there, Lee's channel. Okay. Lee's channel. It's on the shirt. Oh, there yeah. you go. I also got a YouTube, but uh, YouTube's kind of been after me over, so I just moved over to Twitch. But uh, I am trying to work on a documentary right now about the foster care system. It's been kind of held up because uh, it's been relying on my, on my, uh, essentially my foster brother, because he's the first part that I was filming. He's a, he was orphaned, and that's how he entered the system. And so I just wanted to show, you know, make a documentary talking about uh, and showing how people into the system and uh, why and what's life like inside the system and what life is like after the system. Because I think that there's a lot of people believe that uh, these are bad kids that are entering the system, but they're not. Instead of there being sort of influence. No, 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 no. There's, listen, like Carlos, which is, he was literally orphaned. It wasn't like he was orphaned and then was doing street drugs and running the gang. He was orphaned and into the system. Uh, we still got people. Thank you, Dizette. <laughs> Somebody just cheered. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, so, uh, so, uh, yeah. My my dad beat me. My mom was schizophrenic, and I ended up getting really sick under her care. Okay. Uh, what is this? Scumbum, 1986. Is that you as well? No. Okay. Thank you for following. Um, oh, let me get you on here too. Um, so, uh, that is why I knew the system. I never got in any trouble, although, I mean, I guess I, uh, I was truing a lot, but I never. You were what? Truing? Truing. Truing from, from school. Right. But I never got in any trouble. But it sounds trouble. like you had a drive to also complete your education and your exams quicker as well. Yeah, well, I was truing when I was young, when I was living with my. my uh, mom from 11 to 13 and uh, she would call in and tell him I was sick so. do, you, do, you, do you think so did it sound like you were driving to some of the opportunities you had I'm taking you out of that life but as I talked to you you sound like a pretty intelligent person yeah people in chat joke about that 
they, they, they say 200 IQ. Yeah. Not, not me. I'm economically deprived. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, you're economically deprived, but like you have the because it's capability to buy a the gimbal. gimbal. Oh, it's a cheap thing from China. Sure. Yeah. And walk around with a phone and a, sure. a plan and give the socks to the people. Yeah, the socks are donated. Sure. By, by you. Um, so, do, do you think that is it from your perspective? Is it is it a system? Is it an individual responsibility? combination of both is it drug use is it a, a very complicated problem and what oh I, what's causing the crisis in san francisco oh it, it's 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 quite a lot of things okay you got san francisco as a whole doesn't care about the problem they want it to go away sure they want to cover it they want to take the people and move them from downtown this is where the problems Since really started under the bridges. so yeah the, the first thing it, it keeps moving on its own started with edley when they're doing some kind of thing well, there's a parade downtown. They want to get rid of the homeless from you. So they just had police go through and wipe them off the street and grab all their crap and throw it in giant dumpsters. Um, so, of course, they're displaced. Now they're going in places they, didn't, they weren't in before. Um, like under bridges and other in various neighborhoods. And then now everyone's got a problem. And it's just been sort of a, a thing now where they're just moving them everywhere and trying to build more and more shelters. The truth is that there'll never be enough shelters. Never. It doesn't matter. High rises just filled with homeless people is not going to be enough. You got to stem the flow, and the flow is increasing. At where's, least. Where's the flow coming from? Well, one a quarter million kids a year from the foster care system. How many of them in Well, it doesn't need very many. We only have ten thousand homeless now. Just one. More is ten percent. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, I mean. In one year, it's well over. Well, in, in, in one year, it's over the, a quarter of the population here in San Francisco. A lot of people are from out of San Francisco. If you talk to people, homeless people, most of them are not from San Francisco. So they're coming over. There's, like I said, there's no way to, to house all of them. Out of no, they, they they open these navigation centers, trying to buy people tickets to, to leave. Over in Nevada, yeah. To go back to where they came from. Uh, Nevada actually got caught, or uh, Las Vegas got caught, giving people one way, the homeless one-way tickets over here, and the mentally ill. Yeah, so they come over here, like there's a, a case where this guy was mentally ill and blind, and was given a one-way ticket to San Francisco in the gray house. Yeah. He doesn't know what the hell's going on. Yeah. So they've got me the problem. Yeah. But then again, here in San Francisco, so they, we have the homeless problem, right? What, what they do is try to just throw them in places, throw them in these shelters, throw them in, they're just building and building and building. A lot of people are fighting it, but they're not actually taking care of the problem. The problem is we have people out on the street who are on drugs. We've actually made it easier to be out on the street on drugs because we've gotten easier and easier uh, on people who are out on the street on drugs. I mean, uh, marijuana has been legalized, and the punishment for doing drugs on the street, first of all, you're very unlikely to get punished nowadays. For well, especially if folks keep up with the news regarding the new DA that's been elected in San Francisco. Mm. His uh, position is not, not the person who's going to be fired the press. So that, that might get more complicated. Yeah, well, <laughs> the two are interrelated, aren't they? Yeah. You get jacked because somebody wants some crack. Sure. You know? I mean, San Francisco's economy is based off of, I mean, largely tourism. Uh, I mean, it's getting a little bit different where now it's tech related, yeah. but tourism is huge. And they go over and they smell stale pee. That's true. There's yeah. needles and crap all over the floor. All over America as well. All over the world, they come here. They go see the Golden Gate Bridge. More people see the Golden Gate Bridge than the Grand Canyon. More people see Alcatraz than the Grand Canyon, and they got to go on boat to see that. So uh, it's a huge tourist destination. The first thing they see downtown are homeless people and tattered clothes. I think it's a good 
Oh, you see rats. Oh, mice and rats. Uh, but, no, yeah, Union Square, you'll see people sleep in there until the police get them and move them out of there. It's just that there's tons of police now that are forcing through the city, getting the homeless people to move. But we're getting distracted from, from what I was trying to say. So the problem is, is that we're not really dealing with these things therapeutically. Uh, these people, they're essentially products of broken childhood who were dumped out on the street. Right. The, the, the problem is not homeless people. The problem is people who are homeless and addicts, which is 95% of the homeless population. The other, 95, that's official. The other transient person comes out that are able to find I was homeless. Out. Nobody would have ever known. Right. I look the same as I do now. Right. I'm wearing the same backpack. This is from ILSP, Independent Living uh, Skills Program. Um, the, so, people get distracted. They say, oh, the cost of rent is so high and all that. No, the problem is 95% of the homeless people are, are on drugs and a huge percentage of them are, also have mental illness. But we gotta take care of the drugs first. The, we gotta deal with it therapeutically. We gotta get them sobered up and we have to deal with the underlying problems that led them to use in the first place. Because getting somebody sober, you can throw somebody in jail and they're going to be sober yeah. for the most part. There's still ways around that. Yeah, well, they get out, maybe they'll overdose because there's no, because their tolerance went down. Went down. But um, I think that we should take people off the street, get them sober, get them in long-term housing where there's counseling, work through those issues, and then disperse them. Not get them together in like these ghettos which is what they are when you grab a whole bunch of people right. together and put them in one spot. It's not going to get better in that. You got you have to disperse them I mean, uh, so, either so they're, across they're the country. Or, and, and most folks are like trying to get back on Yeah, go feet. to the Tenderloin, see but, what that's but, like. But somebody, you know, some of them are, are back to using drugs. It's more likely than others. So uh, yeah. Yeah. You, you, you have to just, where, where they're out of that element, where they're not around the same people who are, who are uh, going back to doing the same things. But it would be easier to take care of the root problem. The root problem would be kids who are, who are beaten, who 